Hello, this is Hunter McDermott with another episode of Guitar Blog. It is Thursday, October 1st, uh, 4.40 p.m., um, the year 2020. Uh, it's been a little bit of a while since I've done one of these. I uh, moved from Santa Fe, New Mexico, to uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which is back closer to where I grew up and spent many years uh, teaching before heading out west. Uh, so that's been a whole big change in getting settled and moved and all that stuff, but that's mostly done at this point. Um, there was a nice uh, period of time where we had arrived here where I, we didn't have our stuff, which was coming a little bit later, um, but in the car we took here, I made sure to pack a guitar and my trusty uh, Galbraith comping book. So. I was able to get a pretty good amount of practicing in and uh, memorization of, of some of those tunes, uh, building up a comping vocabulary. So that's the first thing I'd like to talk about. Um, so I have done one of the one of the, the studies before uh, based on shiny stockings, the first one in the book, and that covers a lot of really nice chords like little two fives. Uh, it's kind of like a spread open minor voicing to this nice um, 13 chord here. Uh, so it, like right out of the gate the book exposes you to really interesting voicings, at least ones that I have, some that I have and some that I have not come across before, but all of which basically I, I don't have under my fingers. Really the only ones that I'm seeing uh, that are building on stuff that I already know are the drop two voicings, things like that, and the various uh, major voicings. Actually, I haven't seen that one yet, but um, that kind of thing. I haven't seen that one either. But uh, so a big a big thing I'm noticing uh, I have noticed so far is that uh, well anyway I. I'm planning on doing a series about this book, and I'd like to just go through it methodically and kind of pull out all the different ideas I think are demonstrated in the book, things that really make these pieces sound nice. Now these are, are comping studies, so they're not supposed to be standalone pieces of music, but they work as standalone pieces of music. And I think that's part of what Galbraith is getting at, which is uh, your comping should be able to, you don't always have to comp this way, this densely, um, and you shouldn't, but uh, there's no reason why your comping can't have a melodic sense to it, uh, and, and sense of movement and little melodies connecting chords and lots of movement uh, from chord to chord. Even if you're sticking on like a static chord, you should be able to, you should be able to hit multiple voicings uh, doing stuff like It's like four voicings for the same chord, basically, uh, and there's a lot of movement in there, and it, I think it just sounds nice. Um, but anyway, so I, my plan is to get through the whole book. First of all, I'll get through the whole book. So I'm on uh, the study now called Blues and Twelve Keys, which is the seventh study. I've done all the other ones, um, and I've been challenging myself to, before I move on to the next one, to be able to record it, sit down and record it uh, at a at or above the suggested tempo that he puts in the book. And then, so long as it is mostly mistake-free, I'm not looking for 100%, but you know, 85, 90% uh, is fine with me. Uh, so once I get that recorded, I move on to the next one. And of course, each one builds on the stuff that you've learned, so um, I've been keeping a log of all the different chord voicings that appear in the book, and I have, you know, there, there's less and less work as I go through to add new chords because he starts to use a lot of the same ones just in different configurations. Um, but anyway, the goal is to get through the whole book and just like absorb all of this information um, through getting it under my fingers and then to go back and kind of analyze it a little bit more deeply and pick out the little 
elements, like here are the little moves that he does. It's not all about chord shapes, I think is the main thing I'm pulling from this book so far, is I'm, I and I think many people get pretty obsessed with learning new chord shapes. I have to learn a bunch of chord shapes. Uh, and that will never hurt you to like work on you know new chords, but I feel like they should always be or at least eventually be in context. And that's what this book is doing for me. It's teaching me chords, which is good, but then it's also teaching me how to use those chords. So it's a two-part process. Um, little things like, I think one of the most, the easiest things that I've come across so far, because they were based on things that I already was familiar with, is stuff like, little moves like that, where he's doing uh, like a D minor seven chord. That's a minor nine, but. to a G7. He's creating a little bit of a melody and he's showing off three versions of the same chord, basically, uh, and doing it with big movement, which sounds really nice. Um, but that's just like one of the, the various uh, aspects of, I think, what I like so much about this book and about comping in general, being able to throw in these little melodic connecting chord type things. Um, so anyway, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, I'd like to do a series eventually, kind of just like, let's go through the Skullbraith book, um, which other people have done, but let's go through it and pick out the little elements that are interesting and maybe even uh, take some of this information and apply it to tunes that are not in the book. I mean, ultimately that's the goal, right? To be able to sit down with any tune and comp over it and have lots of ammo uh, for doing that, uh, which I believe uh, firmly that this book will give me. Um, so that's been the main thing. That's been my main focus. I have not do, been doing a whole lot with single note playing or with much of anything else really. It's just been like sit down, work on parts of the book, um, which with everything going on now and you know being mostly at home a lot is felt really like a good place to put my energy. Uh, I don't have to sit down and ask myself a lot of questions about what I want to or should work on. I just keep working through the book. Um, and because it's a book that's really heavy with exercises and very, very light on instruction, on like, you know, text-based instruction, um, you could just sit down and learn these pieces. So it'd be like a classical piano player sitting down and like working through a Mozart book or something like that. Like you probably get way more out of the material if you just sit down and learn the tunes. Just get them down, get them under your fingers, uh, work on your reading, work on your articulation and all that kind of stuff. Then if you have a book that's like four times as long, doesn't have nearly as much music in it, but it's just full of words. Uh, so I'm realizing that I should beware of stuff like that. Own more song books, <laughs> own fewer method books uh, is my hot take. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, that's the main thing. The other thing is uh, recording in general. <laughs> I have had a real bear of a time. I uh, I hate like the process of recording. I like doing the videos and talking to people and sharing information and, and hearing back from you guys. Um, the process like of setting up cameras and audio and editing and stuff is something I really, really do not enjoy. I feel like it is the exact opposite of how I want to spend my time. Um, I should be playing more and enjoying the process more and because I, I have a, another thing I do for my work, you know, when I sit down, I don't want this to also feel like work. I want this to be kind of fun. And if I'm struggling with audio and cameras and stuff, then for me, that's not fun. Some people love that stuff, but I am not one of them. Um, so I, I have long recorded the original videos from this channel that are uh, the music theory courses and stuff like that. We're done with like, I took a music stand and I folded it down and I put my laptop on it and I raised it up to my eye level and that was it. And then I hit record. So I used the internal mic on the laptop and the webcam on the laptop. I think I used photo booth or whatever equivalent at the time, just like dead simple. I want to work on this as little as possible. And you know, those videos don't look great and they don't sound great, but they worked. Um, and as I've progressed. I've picked up some nicer audio gear. I've got a much better mic and an interface that's starting to act up. So in recent 
uh, years, I've been able to at least do somewhat better audio quality. The video was always still just a webcam though. And then I would kind of like sync the audio and the video up um, in like iMovie or something. Very uh, low tech for, you know, for me. Um, but the problem was I got a new laptop and even though it's like five years newer than my old one, for whatever reason, uh, something with the software around how the camera, the webcam captures, it can't keep up. So uh, it just would stutter and I would drop frames and then it would get the audio would get off and everything. And I, I don't know why I tried with different programs and stuff, but it was something fundamental about it, how it was doing the video recording with the webcam. So uh, then the move happened and that put a delay on it. But anyway, I've got starting to acquire slowly better gear to try to make this process both better quality and keep it somewhat simple for me so that I can do them readily. Um, and that's been a bit of a headache process, you know? So I've got this nice camera here. I had this whole plan to set up this great audio and record and like sync sound. And I might, I may do that. Um, but then like a dog started barking and everything. So I got a little distracted, but I really wanted to do a video. I just really wanted to do one today. It's been too long. Um, so now I'm just recording directly into the mic on the camera and it's still, you know, it's probably fine. I hope that the picture is fine. It's too dark. I should probably turn on light, but uh, anyway, I hope that at least the quality generally is heading in the in a direction of being better. Maybe I haven't gotten there yet, but anyway, should be dropping frames and stuff like that. Um, but that's it, I think. Uh, I thought I would finish the video by... Um, well, okay, one more thing. Here's like a record recommendation. Um, I have been listening to a record called Blues and the Abstract Truth by Oliver Nelson, and it's fantastic. Uh, I think it's best known for its uh, first track, which is called Stolen Moments, which is just a beautiful tune. But I just love the way Oliver arranges his tunes. They always have lots of great horn parts that play off of each other and stuff. And then he gets into just some straight ahead swing um, stuff, which is, which is great for solos and everything, but like the compositions themselves are also interesting. It's, they're not just like a means to an end, which I appreciate. Um, so check out that record, Blues and the Abstract Truth. You've got, um, Oliver's plays on it, uh, Bill Evans on the piano, Eric Dolphy, uh, Freddie Hubbard, uh, some really, really great players, really great solos. Um, so been listening to that, that record a lot. Um, but I thought I would finish by playing the first three, I don't know, I'm in the, I'm in the middle of learning the first two pages of this Galbraith comping piece, so just for an excuse for something to play, I'll play what of it I sort of kind of have down. Um, it won't be great and I'll eventually record it better once I get it down, but uh, that's all I wanted to do for now. <laughs> once I get the video set up and stuff, I've got some ideas for, for less informal videos to do, get back to a slightly more uh, instruction-based stuff. I don't think I ever want to go back to just doing pure instruction. Um, I want to like get the viewer involved and do more of like a practical like playing along or working through exercises together kind of thing. I want to be a little bit more hands-on, um, less theory, focused on just like pure theory and more on like how to apply it as well. Uh, but we'll get there. Anyway, so I'll just do as much of this as I feel comfortable with. Uh, blues and 12 keys, this will be C, F, and B flat, I think, is about as far as I've gotten. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you all for watching and sticking with me with all these big gaps. Uh, and I will see you again, hopefully not too, too far from now. So here we go.
Alright, anyway, thanks guys. See you later.